A Colleen detective working one of the most violent cases the department has seen hopes a fresh set of eyes and new technology will help solve a decade old murder cold case. The case involves a robbery and double homicide that happened at a family convenience store on July 4th, 2007. Channel 6 News reporter Amani Payne spoke to the victim's families and the new detective on the case. Amani. Doug and Leslie, I spoke to homicide detective Sharon Brink, who took over the case after the last detective retired. Brink says this case is unlike anything she's seen before. She's now tracking down fresh leads to get the killer off of the streets and bring the victim's families justice. It's the cold case that's haunted the Colleen Police Department for a decade. It's pretty eerie, pretty eerie. July 4th, 2007, here at this Dollar General on Stan Sluder, a double homicide that shook the city. 40-year-old Sheila Reed and 28-year-old Griselda Ramos opened up the store that morning and were the only two working. By 8.23 a.m., Reed was dead and Ramos died later at the hospital. Officer Williams was working routine patrol and when she drove by the Dollar General there on West Dance Leader, she saw a vehicle which she didn't recognize as normally there for the employees. So she drove by the side of the store and uh, at that time saw one of the doors was slightly ajar and that was very unusual. So she turned back around and stopped, went to the front of the store, noticed that um, there was, an in there was a, a body laying inside and she called for assistance. The only thing detectives knew about the suspect is that he wore a mask. That is until Detective Sharon Brink took the case. Does the department believe this was a random act? I don't believe so, no. This video released to Channel 6 is the reason why. It shows a white man enter the Dollar General on July 3rd, 2007, the day before the murders. You never see him leave, but Detective Brink says a second video, which police say was too violent to release, shows the same man in the store the next day with a gun. Sheila Reed's daughter, Jennifer Helms, did see that second video and calls it shocking. They had a video of him walking and with the mask and the gloves um, with the gun. So he actually, come to find out, um, stayed in the back stock room all night. It's pretty easy to get into the stock rooms um, where they're normally located. So he could have easily slipped and hid behind boxes, which is what we have been told. Um, there's no way he could have just came in on his own and them not notice. She says she also watched a video showing the man pacing back and forth in the stock room before the murders. I mean, it makes your heart race because I mean, you know, you know, it's a movie you watched a billion times, you know the ending, but it was definitely not an awesome feeling. Jennifer was a teen and out of town visiting her father when the murder happened. 10 years later, she's married with a child still desperate for answers from police and closure. What if it was your family? I mean, I think that's the biggest thing. What if it was your family? You'd want the person caught. And that's the thing is people was like, well, it's not gonna happen to me. Well, everyone says that and look, I mean, who would have thought my mom would have been murdered you know, when I was 17. Detective Brank says a major roadblock has been technology. Then back in 2007, video quality wasn't very great. So a lot of the video was very grainy. And we have new technology we just got our hands on a few months ago. We're gonna run the video through there and see if we can get more of the actual still frames that we can actually look at. But she also says people talking on the streets has led to progress. We actually have a possible name and working on doing lineups. Brink says this case is unlike anything she's worked before. It's not, um, it's not normal to have a double homicide in a business. It makes people anxious and uneasy to know that a store they go to every day, something like this could happen. She hopes the name and lineup will lead to an arrest in the near future, and so does Jennifer. I'm always hopeful. Um, Obviously, I want the guy to be caught. Hopeful she won't have to wait another 10 years for that to happen. Police would still like your help, too. Anyone with information about the crime is asked to give investigators a call. Doug and Leslie. All right, Imani, thanks so much.